same. All right. You know what? I'm pulling myself a glass of seltzer. After this, I will return to my usual self. Nice. This has been such a weird, like... This has been such a weird one today. But Game we're one. here, guys. This is the final set. Grand where we're going to be ending up. I hope you guys are ready for more Charizard versus uh, Villager action. Mm -hmm. That was good for the Pokemon. I was anticipating um, the aggressive landing option, but you know, Villager's grab can sometimes like, sort of yoink people in the air. However, that being said, right now, Beast controlling this sludge super, super well. Pokemon, like every time I've seen him play today, he has been recovering high. Um, so that's definitely something that Beast. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty good call out. That was a fantastic call out. Yeah, no, no, no. Because, like, um, I think Beast Side B would have interacted with the Watering Can regardless. Um, and, like, would have, because it's an actual projectile, it would have hit it, bounced off of that. Either way, however, Pokemon. Like Lamp's tree usage. So much. That move is so absurdly strong, but I really like the usage of it. Pokemon is doing like a really good job. He's adjusted his spacing a little bit of how he is pressuring somebody's shield on the platform. So you instead of, you don't see him drift in as much as he's going in with the slingshot. That being said, good catch on the air dodge coming from Beast. That was fantastic. He just waited. He fell alongside Pokemon, waited for the perfect moment to shine, and he got it. Both of these guys are just swinging at each other right now. The past 20 exchanges, they've just been like swinging and swinging on each other's shields. You know, this is this is another slobber knocker. This has been like the theme of the night. It's literally just like, yo, put your dudes up. We're gonna fight. Projectiles are for cowards. Camping is for cowards. We're just gonna fight. Oh my god, he didn't mash fast enough that time. Yeah, he was definitely like not anticipating it. He didn't start out his mash as early as he would have liked to. That being said, Charizard's skilled shield, ugh, looking like a bit of a skittle at that moment, trying to get those back, he's leading the high recovery from Pokemon, but he slightly misspaced himself. That's a jab lock, up smash, once again, just really, really good, reliable damage. I feel like every single time that Pokemon has tried to go for the jab lock, up smash, um, into up hit. <laughs> Watching Flare Blitz. Alright, that was definitely a Lord Rocket, but... <laughs> but you know what? It worked out. It worked out. You know, he was able to fly to safety. Get out! You've been in the simulation for 10 years, wake up! Look at the way that Pokelime is controlling space, especially with the tree. He forces, um, you know, Beast not to commit two goals. He, he just, like, forces so many different options that are unpleasant! Why does that kill? Why so, does that kill sometimes? Does someone explain that to me? Okay, so, so, the Lloyd killing? Yes! So the I, Lloyd, I know if he's riding it, it's a lot so, stronger. So, so the Lloyd is the strongest at its startup, and I actually think I saw Axe. I swear to God, I saw Axe. I, I want to see Axe. that kill one more time. That was definitely Lloyd. That was one hundred percent. I saw, I saw Villager's Axe. Look at, oh, that's him on his ledge hang animation. Yeah, that was a little bit cool. That's him, like that's his two frame animation. Actually, as as he's grabbing onto the ledge, and that's his two frames of vulnerability. Uh, but that being said. So the Lloyd has, I believe, like five different states of being. It's it's some number like that. It gets progressively weaker the longer it's been out. Um, the strongest is as you're riding it. The second strongest is as soon as it comes out like that. That's crazy. I did not know that they like that move could kill like oh, that. Oh, kills. That move is strong. I knew I knew it could kill if you're riding it, but active on three fifty two fifty seven. Oh my god. Smash Ultimate Frame Data is like such a good website for everything except for a whole bunch of good moves. Where it's like, or moves that have like progressively changing uh, damage where they just don't have any information on that stuff for some reason. But whatever. Yeah, and, and game two already, Pokemon able, like, I like the way that he's always consistently able to fight his way out of the corner. I feel like a lot of people, they're just... <laughs> I have never seen a down air be extended for so long, it hit both of the balloons and still had enough time to hit Pokemon. That's pretty good. Oh my gosh! What do you like with these ridiculous call-outs today? And, and Beast must be, like, reconsidering what he's doing. Ah! <laughs> 
I can only imagine what's happening on Beast's stream right now. Yeah, a, a pocket. Look at all of this coverage on the ground already. 35% and significant stage control. He had the jump call up. It was a little bit too late to pull the trigger. Right now, Beast is looking to get some of the lead traps going. Um, but he pushed them a little bit too far. Let like Pokey Lim just get back on. Okay. Uh, good use of the uh, good use of the tree to kind of scare uh, Beast into rolling into him. What, what are these rules? More rolls than a baker right now? What the hell? More rolls than my sides. Um, that being said, <laughs> you know, okay, I'm kind of looking for an axe right now. I don't even think he would have killed from setting stage like that. However, that move is deceptively quick. It comes, the hitbox is active on frame 6. Yeah, um, it's and, super and quick, but it does have a lot of good though. It's an aerial smash attack, basically. Um, that was a full on stage break. Nothing Charizard could have done there. Nothing he could have done there. The only thing he could have hoped for was like maybe to drift in a little bit uh, farther into PS2. But on a stage like this one, it's especially more risky. Um, considering that you might risk like getting pineappled as well. Beast has not seen the light of ground in such a long time. Pokelam has been all over him. He just needs to get some space between him and Pokelam. Pokelam just not letting go. Okay. Interesting use of the flare blitz into the tree. Just really hit that tree. Interesting. Is that the wood we're using now? Okay. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you gotta be careful when you're hitting the tree like that. Um, because you're putting yourself in so much lag. Yeah. I mean, the tree was disappearing. I don't know why he, why Beast did the up smash, honestly. But the tree was on its way out. Like, it was turning yellow. It was disappearing. It didn't have a hitbox anymore. Or a hurtbox yep. anymore. Mm hmm I, I honestly think that Beast is just kind of flailing because he's frustrated, Frustr frustrated right now, which that's understandable. It can be Villager can be really tough to fight when they're playing like on point and they're just calling you on like on certain things. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Beast can do here. I, I think Pokemon. He is so confident in his downloads right now. He he has, is getting greed after greed. He is punishing all of these whiff moves. From um from from Beast, I I just don't understand what he could be doing. What do you think like he could do like to try to bring this back? I, I mean, that's the thing is like he's playing he's playing a heavy against Villager. Villager particularly thrives against heavy characters because they have a hard time getting through his projectiles. Um, honestly, if he had Squirtle, I'd say try to go Squirtle until they're at kill percent. But he doesn't like Squirtle, which that's perfectly fair. He's there, Mario. He's going Mario, and they're on Yoshi's. Oh, boy. Three, two, one, go! I don't really the know. The old reliable. It's like, how good is Villager against uh, Mario against Villager, specifically? Maybe better than Charizard. What is he doing? Do you see the way that he's playing? He's sitting at the top platform. Yeah, he's just waiting to see if he can get like some kind of conversion, I guess. Oh my god, such a good dash back. Yeah, he completely led um, Beast Drift. Like, even though Mario has, like, excellent aerial mobility like that. Oh um, my Pokemon had just enough space to be able to color out of the So I really do like the way that Pokemon plays with the He plays them, like, so much. Like, so much more than most villagers do. No, 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 you have to be. Right? You have to be confident in the leads that you're going for. You see him go Like, every time I see him go through Down Smash, he is connecting it just about every single time. You're um, Smash. Smash beast. Kill him, buddy. Yeah. Oh wow, that up smash actually gonna be clanking with the projectile though. Um however this is looking like a pretty tough spot for the beast right now. Uh Pokemon should have picked it out a little bit if he went through the back here, but up there. Three turn ups. <laughs> triple turn up. That move is so opponent. Yeah, so strong. You just end stocks. Alright, I'm gonna say this. Um, Beast as Mario. When I've always seen him play Mario before, he loves landing on top of people's shields. He loves landing on top of them. Villager yeah. has maybe one of the best, all-encompassing out-of-shield options that is quick and safe and non-committal. Yeah. So, Beast has to be respecting it if he's not like spacing his back. He can't be landing with nails. He can't be landing with like you know approaching backers. He needs to be a whole lot more careful because look at. 
Oh my goodness, that reaction was crazy. Up there? No, up there. Yeah, they're not able to find it a little bit outside of the Pusan threshold to be able to link them together. However, Pokemon right now, he is still just looking for a way to get Beast off of him. Beast is just simply like dogpiling him at this point. I really like the way that Beast is playing right now. He's just playing super aggro, he's trying to force Pokelam to kind of respect the fact that he's playing a super agile character with really big hitboxes. Ooh, I like the movement with uh, with the pocket there. You know, Villager like is just able to really, really switch up the momentum, very similar to like how Snake lands. Definitely helps out with landing. Um, I would like to see some more like aggressive landings coming from Pokemon. I do feel like Downer would do a really good job of contesting stuff like Mario's up there. However, that being said, and like, like, he is crossing up B so well with these big reverse pockets. It's working out so much in his favor. Again, the jab, block, up smash, only the only 56 percent But finally, I'm, that is going to be able to take it. So I'm kind of wondering what Beast's, um, what Pokeland's bands were, because Yoshi's just gives, like, he just gives Villager, like, so much extra movement options off stage in the form of the wall jumping that he wouldn't get on Battlefield, so I'm not really sure like what Pokemon banned and why um, why Beast opted for the stage. Well, Beast opted for the stage because Mario, Mario go up B string. On, on. No, I know, but he can do that on Battlefield as well. Uh, yeah, that's true, but you but because of the really low ceiling, you'll be able to get it off a little bit easier. I think I'm pretty sure the stage has standard ceiling. Oh no no no! Um, Yoshi's has one of Yoshi's has a uh, pretty short ceiling, doesn't it? And and no, I'm pretty sure it's standard. Well, regardless, Battlefield has the tallest ceiling. No, that's town. No, you gone game, buddy. It's Battlefield has the tallest ceiling. Okay, we shouldn't be having this discussion. We should probably just look it up afterwards. Yeah. But I'm fairly certain Town and City has the highest floor in the game. Oh, this is gonna be it. Oh my God, the read is perfect. Yeah, he just he just like forced him at that point. There was so little that he could have done. Everything else was covered. Jump was like covered by the tree. He couldn't even drift in for much. Um, All right, yeah, Pokelam is our Xeno Wi-Fi 11 champion. Congratulations. Three O's in a row, honestly. That was... Nobody on the receiving end could take, like, a single game except, like, Apollo last set. Yeah, no, that's true, actually, isn't it? Jeez. All right, so let's go look it up. Um, ceiling smashed ultimate. So Battlefield has a slightly bigger one, apparently. Yeah. I mean, slightly bigger than Yoshi's. The lowest, um, the lowest stages are tied Lilat, Yoshi's Island, and NF2. 